Hi, I'm Dave Ingerbretson. Leroy Hyatt and I would like to welcome you to another edition of Fly Tying, the Angler's Art. This time we're going to tie three flies, a dry fly, a wet fly, and a steelhead fly. And I think the dry fly is maybe a little different than most of you have seen. Most everyone has heard about the pheasant tail nymph, but this is going to be a parachute style dry fly, the pheasant tail dry. Mm -hmm. And I, don't, I think that's probably new it's to a lot of people. It's different, yeah, I've never seen it before. Then we're going to tie a <coughs> lake fly that's very popular here in the Pacific Northwest, and that's the Doc Spratly wet. And we'll finish up with a steelhead fly, the boss. Mm -hmm. Well, how are you going to tie that parachute uh, All right. pheasant tail? I'll use a ADOT a rusty brown tying thread. The wing post will be of white calf body hair. It'll have a brown hackle around that wing post. The tail and the rear third of the, or two thirds of the body will be the pheasant tail, where it gets its name. The thorax will be peacock curl. It'll be ribbed with fine copper wire. I have a standard dry fly hook in the vise. This is a size 12. And this would be a fly you can tie in a lot of different oh, sizes. They said all the way down to a 22. I, yeah. I don't know that I could tie a size 22 in a parachute. Don't know. That'd be interesting sometime to try. Yeah. All right, I'll get a little bit of this white calf body here. This stuff is much easier to work with as far as putting in wing posts and so on. It stacks much nicer, gives a much nicer appearance. Well, it's a softer, finer yes. uh, material. Now, of course, you could use a variety of things for that post. You oh. could use uh, poly or a number <clears throat> of things. You could use some anything high-vis. Yeah, but this uh, calf is nice to work with. I want it about the length, the shank of the hook. So I'm going to put it in and tie it down. And again, we've got to remind people, it's not obvious watching you tie, but you're putting as much stress on that thread as it'll take. As, yes, You have absolutely. to bind things down firmly and hard. Now, I'm going to stand that wing post up. I'm going to wrap in front of it which will stand it up, and then I'm going to go around the entire wing post. Now, I can't pull too hard on it at this point, or it'll all just pop right off. You can see the hair moving. I am tying it as tight as I think I can get away with. And I, I think it's important to note that you're pulling in kind of a downward direction. Yes. If you pull at right angles <laughs> to the hook straight towards you, you'll pull it'll it off every time. It'll all pop right off. Then as I come back down, I can tighten that up a little bit more. Oh, that's a good looking post. Then I'll come to the rear. Now, do you ever put head cement on that, that I wrapping have. on the two? I uh, have. Solidified ice. But I, I hate to do it now with what all we got going on oh, this yeah. flight. Yeah. <clears throat> now the, uh, the tailing material will be pheasant tail. Got a couple of broken ones in there. And they tie this a little bit on the long side, I'm sure, to help float that parachute the way the parachute is. That might be a little bit longer than the shank of the hook is. I will then tie on a piece of the copper wire ribbing. And this is a fine copper wire. I'm sure you could use uh, gold, you could use silver. Uh, it's just a, a material to help hold that uh, fragile pheasant tail because a fish could get a tooth in this pheasant tail fibers and break it off pretty easy. Now trim those butts off, lay those in place, and then wrap the butts or wrap the tips forward. And that looks at this point kind of a strange little well, I, I mean, like the way the pheasant tail fibers got that fuzzy edge to it. Yes. And it makes a really good looking material. It gives some I, character to the body and a little mottled coloration. I let, lost one of them there, but we'll trim that off. <clears throat> then I'll get rid of the rest of those. You always have one that doesn't want to come You know, come this is a good time to mention that you should be tying with a high quality pair of scissors. Yes. Uh, scissors, I like, we both like scissors with a one uh, serrated edge mm -hmm. to make it easier to clip hair, but mm -hmm. if you can't cut a single hair at the very tip of those scissors, you need a new pair of scissors. That's right. Yeah, I always test them when I buy them to see if it'll clip one hair off my arm. I do exactly the same. Oh, do yeah. you really? Oh, yeah. And you want a fine <coughs> point so you can get in and close and work with it. 
And, no, I'm going to. Uh, you might pay twice as much for a good yeah, scissors, but it's worth it. But it would well be worth and it. And of course, it lasts longer, stays sharp longer. Now, I've tied that hackle uh, onto the hook itself. Now, there's two ways you could do this. You could wrap the, uh, the hackle on now and force the thorax, the peacock hurl, under it. Um, I guess just kind of a personal preference thing, what it, whatever it is you would like to do. I'm going to go ahead and wrap that thorax area in first. And here we are again tying with peacock curl, the old standard material. Now it was interesting to me that this time you tied the uh, hackle stem onto the hook. Haven't I seen you also run it up the post? I, I've ran it up the post, yes, either one. And then I'll get, well, I need to unwrap that one more time. Then I'll get that tied down, clip it off. And then I'm ready to go with that hackle. Three or four wraps. Well, if I could get it to stay on. Well, I'm here, trying to pull too the hard case. on If you it. pull down a little bit, it'll stay yeah. on. If you pull straight at you, it'll come off. Now I'm going to capture that feather opposite myself with my finger. It's pressed against the hook. No, I didn't notice. Did you start high up. and wrap down the I post? I did. I tried to yeah. start high, and it popped off a time or two, yeah, but, but I think but that's... But you're basically winding down. Yes. Yes. Now build a little head right here. I'm going to whip two on it. And then three or four wraps. Now I might say too on these parachute flies, it's nice to flare the tail out as you've done. I don't think we commented on that, but to have a little spread on the <coughs> tail to help this thing uh, set up nicely on mm -hmm. the water. Mm -hmm. This one, it's stuck together, but that well, flares no, a little. It's flares, it flares enough. Well, there's a pheasant tail dry, has the white post wing, has the pheasant tail for the, the tail and the rear body section, peacock thorax, the white post and the brown hackle. And it's a good generic fly. It is. It'd be uh, a and good tied fly. in a variety of sizes, and it would be good in a variety of situations. Nice tie. Good looking little wing post stands up. It really there. is. <laughs> See that? Yeah. Yeah. Now, next we're going to tie the Doc Spratly wet fly, which I tend to think of as a Pacific Northwest fly. Uh, Washington, Idaho, uh, southern Canada, mm -hmm. uh, because that's where I learned of the fly. That's where I, I don't know if it's popular other places or not. And you tell me you learned of it up in Canada. I did. Well, this last year I knew the fly beforehand, but uh -huh. this is a variation I had not seen before. All right. Well, tell us about it. All right. I'll use a 6 aught black tying thread. I have the black easy dub. Now, you could use whatever color body you would like. Uh, up there they use mostly seal dubbing. Uh, I saw them mostly in black, red, olive. Uh, I'll use the uh, sinking silver tinsel rib. It'll have a, a two strands of crystal flash out each side of the fly. The uh, tail will be the uh, pheasant tail rump fibers and the hackle will also become a pheasant tail. And the head will be peacock curl. Now I have a 2x long hook in the vise. This is I think a size 6, you know it's an 8. Now when I fished up there are walking around, wife and I were walking around this little camp and uh, listening to a couple of the guys talk, oh, what'd you catch those fish on? Oh, a Doc Spratly. Oh, well, immediately I knew what a Doc Spratly was. So, well, how big, somebody said. Well, he says fairly large. Well, what the world is fairly large? Well, we walked up to the little lodge, a little fishing uh, uh, shop in that little lodge, and they had a Doc Spratly there, this variation that I had never seen before. So I went back to my where I was camped and tied the fly, and the next day it really proved its worth. Now what was the variation? Doc Spratly is normally tied on a shorter shank hook. Mm -hmm. uh, it did not. It does not have that uh, uh, fly, the uh, crystal flash through it. Doesn't have any of that. But I kind of I like the fly. I have used it now here in the states since then and done very well with it. Well, I hadn't seen the version with that crystal flash, and that no, just adds a little bit just, of sparkle. Just a little bit. It just does, and it gives it a nice appearance. You'll see it when I get through it. Mm -hmm. Now, I have the oval tinsel wrapped in. I have the body material wrapped in. 
again behind that hat, that rib and then come forward. Now this oval tinsel you're using is a weighted type tinsel, it is. isn't it? It has weight inside of it. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. we'll run to the front or to about to the three-quarter point. I'll clip this off and then here comes the I'm not going to reverse wrap this. As big as this tinsel Shouldn't is, have to, yeah. it won't make any difference. Just a little bit added sparkle to it. Well, and in this case, and added the, weight. And the, yes. And then I'm going to take my tool and scrub it out again, pick all that out, give it a little bit uh, more of a For those of you that might have missed it on a previous show, uh, this tool is a popsicle stick very expensive uh, with the hook and loop the velcro the hook and loop <laughs> fastened with the hook part uh, glued on the stick and it's a terrific little rake. It, it works very well now for the crystal flash I just take two strands of it and here again I don't like to use a whole lot of this it just in some cases will detract from the fly. Well, if you overdo it, it certainly will add too much sparkle, yeah. I'll tie it in on my side with quite a little bit sticking out over the front and then fold it over and now I've got two sticking out each side. Come back to the back, clip them off. About the length of the tail? About the length of the tail. Now I'll take one of these pheasant rump feathers again and like I said, this is a variation I had not seen before but that next day fishing in that little lake uh, I've caught steelhead smaller than some of the fish I caught in that lake wow. I just had an absolute ball their wife doesn't fish she was just back in camp reading a book but I had an absolute marvelous day fishing on that little lake in fact I hope to go back this year because I can understand that because from <coughs> what I've heard you've caught some pretty small steelhead yes <laughs> that's very true <laughs> but I've had fun doing it. <laughs> now I've again wrapping this wet fly style so it streams back over the hook. And now you can see how that oh, crystal yeah. flash takes over. Well, I'm a big fan of that the green rump feather from a pheasant. Oh, too. I am too. I am too. Try a number of patterns with that. I'll fold it all back, run over it just a little bit to make sure it's all bound down nicely. And then we'll take some of this peacock curl, the old standard stuff. Do you know how often we've used peacock oh, I, in this I, series I, of I've shows? I've thought about that same thing, uh, and we really have. And we've said it before, but that just speaks to what a great material it is. I don't think you can beat peacock curl. It's for going a to lot mix nicely with the green rump feather mm -hmm, for color. Mm -hmm. It's going to sparkle nicely with the. Uh, a little bit of crystal flash in there. And you know, I don't know why or what the head represents with this, with it just some kind of an emerger pattern, I guess. And I don't know if they take that fly for a damsel, for a dragon. I don't know what they take yeah, it for. Even a caddis. Could be a caddis. Up in Canada, they call them sedges. Now, I did not ta uh, use that on a, a heavy sinking line. I used it on a slime line. Mm -hmm. Uh, it would be down, I would guess, three or four feet, depending on how fast I was kicking, mm -hmm. trolling along. And of course, when you say slime line, you're talking about one of these and, clear yeah. still water type lines. Intermediate line. Mm -hmm. Intermediate sinking. Uh, slime line because they are so slick when they're wet, oh, they, they just really cast are. like a dream. Yeah. That's my number one sinking float tube oh, line. Oh, yeah. Well, depending on where I am, I, yeah. sometimes I'll use a five or a six to get down deep. Oh, yeah. But yeah, right. I really do like that too. But there is this version of a Doc Spratly, and with any, like any fly, there's going to be a lot of different versions of it. But this fly works so well for me in either black or red up there in that little lake. It has nothing more than the pheasant rump feather for the tail and the hackle. This one is black, ribbed with the sinking silver. Has the crystal flash out either side. Has the peacock head. You know, it's one of those flies that, like so many of them, you just look at it and you know, and it'll, you work. know it'll work. Yep. Well, when I heard the guy talking about uh, Doc Spratly, I knew right away what mm -hmm. it was, but then he says fairly large. What's fairly large? Well, just a little bit bigger than large. Oh, okay. Well, but I'm not as you, big as really large. I'm glad you clarified <laughs> right. oh, yeah. that. Then. Well, it's a technical term. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have you ever fished it in rivers? I never have. I haven't either. I never have. No? All right, now we're going to finish up today's show tying another steelhead fly, the boss. Mm -hmm. And this is a fly, as I understand it, was developed 
in the Oregon area for some of the Oregon I think that's rivers. where it originally came, probably yeah. around the Rogue River, someplace over there. Mm -hmm. well, but it's a it's an excellent fly. I don't know why I don't use it. I've tied mm -hmm. a lot of them. I, I don't use it all that much. But well, I've never used it. I've seen it, know of it. That's, that's no. about the same with me. All right, I'll use a standard black six-aught tying thread. I have a size two hook in the vise. It's just a standard steelhead eye-up hook. The eyes of this fly will be a chain, bead chain eye that's just like the old bathtub bead chain. That's yep. what it is. Comes in various sizes. This is a medium type weight. The hackle in front will be red. I will use the gold sinking oval braid tinsel for the rib. The body will be black chenille. And the tail is dyed black squirrel tail. Now I have that number two hook in the vise. I have pinched the barb. And I'll go ahead and start this tying thread up front. I'm not going to the rear this time. I want to put this eye in first. A little trick for people. Uh, I see you've got the eye, the two eyes cut. Yes. Um, my fingers don't work like they used to, and I find for me, I take the whole chain and I lay one side over, oh. then I figure it and bind it down, then I take my and side cutters cut and cut it oh, off. Okay. And it gives me more to hang on sure. to. Well, I've got that bound down real good. And now I'll go to the rear. Do you ever cement it there? I sometimes I do. put a I drop will. of uh, the super glue yeah. on there. When I get back to the back, I'll go ahead and, and yeah. touch that with that rubber cement. Ah, yeah, I, I use the uh, super crazy glue. type, super type glue, and just yeah, one little dot, one. and boy, it gets on there. The only thing we're really wanting to do is make sure that all that thread's bound down real right. good. Right. And by the time we get back up there, it'll be dry. Now this fly does ride upside down in the water too. Mm -hmm. Which now, doesn't matter because no, there's no wing. No, none whatsoever. And actually it probably helps keep from snagging the rocks. Now for some reason, they, this is the only fly I've ever seen this done with. They want this tail material actually longer than the hook shank. Really? And I cannot for the life of me understand why that is, but that's the way the fly was originally designed. Uh -huh. So I'll stick that Might in. Might as well do it. There's the about the length, there's a little bit longer than the length, and I'll clip this off. Don't really worry about how much those butts are left because I'm going to cover the whole thing with sure. chenille anyway, and get that bound in good. Now you can see that makes a very, very long mm -hmm. wing, but uh, that's what they claim. Now we'll get the, uh, the gold tinsel. Now when you talk about uh, weighted tinsel, it really mm -hmm. is tinsel that has Lead weight wire. inside mm -hmm. it. Oh, it's not and, lead uh, wire. It's a lead substitute. Lead substitute, but uh, it really is like a, a like a uh, oval rib, except it's weighted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. The other would work, but uh, obviously this fly is meant to go down with the bead chain eyes and the uh, the weighted rib. Well, I don't know where the end of the chenille is. Okay, certainly don't need that much. <laughs> Clip it off. This is the large size chenille. If you want it a little sparser, you could put it with the medium. Well, another little steel. trick with that rotary vise is I never waste any material because I hold the uh, hold it in card hand. of chenille mm -hmm. in my hand and then rotate the vise to wind it up, mm -hmm. cut it off the right length, and there's no and waste whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, another advantage of rotating your vise if you have now a rotator. I'll, I'll run this forward. And tie it off. I have to put some hackle up here in the front so I don't want to get up here too close to those bead chain eyes. Then I'm going to wrap the tinsel. I'm not going to reverse wrap this. It's, you could, but there's it's no large need enough. To. Yes, yeah. it's large enough it will stay up on top. Tie it off. I really like this this uh, weighted material, this, oh, yeah. this braid, it gives the fly just that little bit of additional weight well, and you to can go even, down. You can even wrap a whole entire body, wrap you the could. hook shank with sure it. Sure could. Uh, just depending on how you want to use it, mm -hmm. but it's, it's very nice to get some extra weight in that uh, material. Mm -hmm. And I'll get this red hackle tied in. Are you concerned about how long that is? In, oh, uh, if I would have had some maybe a little bit longer, I'd go ahead and I would have gone ahead and put that in. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm not even real sure what those are going to represent, just no, something well, moving up there. Yeah, 
I often like to have it about coming back, uh, ending about at the point of the hook if yes. I have material that will yes. do it. Uh, I would, uh, myself, that's the way I would go too, but from the old original pattern, they used that shorter material, short. and, mm -hmm. and I can't tell you why that is. Mm -hmm. Now I'll get my whip tool out, hold all that out of the way, and do a little whip finish right there. Now I have also left quite a little bit of room out here in front, give that fly, that hook, a little bit more chance to swim naturally. Mm -hmm. I have closed it all off. Well, and you could put a riffle hitch on there too. You could, easily. which would keep the fly up higher to the, yeah. to, toward the surface. But I was going to say, in this case, with a deep sinking fly, there's probably no yeah. reason to riffle it. Although I know people that will do that yeah. with that fly. Now I'll get the head cement on it, run it down good between and in front. Well, why don't you tell people what the materials are again, then let's talk a little bit about steelhead fishing. Oh, well, I'd rather go steelhead well, fishing. Well, I would too, but... but uh... <laughs> All right, the boss fly has the bead chain eye, then it has the dyed black squirrel tail, tail. It has a black chenille body, has the oval gold rib, and the red hackle in front. Now, as this fly goes through the water, that bead chain will actually turn the fly over. What we're right upside down, just mm -hmm. like that. Again, a, a good feature. Uh, a lot of times, you'll hook the fish in the upper part of mm -hmm. the jaw rather than the well, lower. Well, it may not tend it to snag the rocks as well. May not snag as bad. Yeah. That's correct. Well, now, when you go steelhead fishing, uh, what kind of water are you looking for? I know a lot of people, uh, whether they're beginners or even experienced steelheaders, don't exactly know what they're looking for <laughs> to find a run to fish. Well, I'm not sure I know what I'm looking for all the time. I like water that's about the three to five foot range. Mm -hmm. I like just a little bit of a choppy roll. That's what I was going to say. I like a little, I call just it bouncy water. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. Now, mm -hmm. that's me personally. Now, I know many times, uh, I like to fish the water, kind of the still water, just right above a heavy riffle. Mm -hmm. As the fish run through the riffle, they'll rest mm -hmm. just on the other side of that. A lot of people will bypass that water. Well, I find if I'm fishing too long a slow water, mm -hmm. it's not working the fly well, right. It won't swim as well. No, yeah. that's true. It will not. Uh, how about home rocks? Uh, people ask me all the time, why? what's a home rock? Well, I hear about home rocks. If you know the water, where you are. I, I worked with a guy, you and I both know him. Mm -hmm. um, Glenn had a, a, a place on the Snake River that he would go out just after daylight in the morning. He knew the water so well, this particular run. He could drive along the river, go to that particular spot, look at the water level on the bank. He would know then if the water level was correct to go fish it. He knew exactly where to stand, he knew where the rock was, he could cast, and if there was a fish there, he's going to take mm -hmm. it home. Well, basically a home rock, as I understand it, and the way I use it, is it's a, probably a sunken boulder mm -hmm. that you don't see, but the fish rest by it. And you know where and it is. And you know if one fish moves on, there'll be another one in That's there. right. That's All right, right, well, this time we've tied, again, three flies. We started out with the pheasant tail parachute dry. Dry fly. We tied a Dox Prattly wet, and we finished up now with the Boss Steelhead fly. And I hope gave you a few tips on how to find steelhead water. So. Uh, Get out there and tie some flies. I uh, hope you can go fishing, and we'll look forward to seeing you again on our next show. Thanks for watching. Dave and Leroy have produced two 100 minute videos covering basic trout fly selection and tying for the Western and Eastern United States. For basic Western and Eastern flies videos, call 1 800 883 0124 or visit our website at publictelevision.org. Cost of each video is $16.95 or get both for just $31.95 plus shipping and handling. You can also order the programs from this series. Each videotape includes three programs for just $22.95 plus shipping and handling. To order, call 1-800-883-0124 or visit us at our website, publictelevision.org.
For more information on this series, please visit our website, publictelevision.org.